Army doctors struggle to find a cure for the deadly virus spreading throughout a California town that was brought to America by an African monkey. That was the tagline from the movie Outlook, which starred Dustin Hoffman, Morgan Freeman, and Rene Russo. That 1995 Ebola virus battling film captured the imagination when it came out then, and it has even today. You know, even this year, it's been in the Netflix top five. Amidst this, all this mad action sequence is one of the most compelling and amazing scene occurs when a character takes off their hazmat mask in the presence of a severely infected and contagious wife. And here we are in 2020, and the COVID-19 paradoia is spreading and it rains. So it's within context of our highly sensitized, highly sanitized, and highly cultural mindset of this pandemic these days, especially striking to see this kind of display of compassion. It's interesting when we return to the campus at Crossroads International Church, how soon after I found myself in acts of compassion and love for each of you. All the good intended six foot separation was challenged by people's needs and a well-based desire to meet people where they are, to touch and pray with people, to anoint with oil, and to simply return an embrace that is so needed by the hurting. Morning folks, my name's Pastor Jim Wallace. I am from Crossroads International Church and I'm here to address today that we really need to find ways to touch lives virtually and in person whenever and wherever possible. In that movie script where an outbreak, uh, if we converted that to say biblical times, a big feature, a big feature film, the epidemic wouldn't be Ebola. It wouldn't be the coronavirus. Nope. It would be that headliner transmittal disease that goes by an all be different name, leprosy. Ben-Hur was just on last weekend, maybe you caught it, and uh, Judah Ben-Hur, uh, his mother and sister contract this terrible disease. And by the way, that disease becomes a central player as this film comes to a climax. Anyone who grew up in a church has a very healthy fear and maybe even uh, awe of leprosy. We, we knew it, we dreaded it, and it was usually an incurable affliction. It was mentioned in so many well-known Bible stories. We learned that it was a lingering condition that disfigured its victims over time and eventually led to death. We also learned that God used leprosy to symbolize sin and the debilitating influence of sin on a person's life. When I was in Hawaii in 2008, I picked up a book in a laundry room. I know what you're, what are you doing in the laundry room in, uh, in Maui? Um, but I was, I was drying my uh, bathing suit and there was a book, uh, which, which I read about the leper, priest of Malachi. And that book traces the, the life of Father Damien from his boyhood in rural Belgium to his death as a leper uh, and on a leper settlement after he did, by the way, 16 years of remarkable accomplishments. Uh, I, won't, I won't go through all the details, but it was a, it was a remarkable story. I recommend you read up on uh, that, that amazing uh, Christian evangelist and missionary who went to Hawaii many, many years ago. Symptoms usually start with small blemishes, but it only slowly starts to invade and corrupt the entire body. I did uh, a series in 2018 called Where Is God When It Hurts? And during the series, we learned uh, about a, a man called Dr. Paul Brand. He's from England, by the way, who was a modern day Father Damien. My series is based on a book by the same name, written by Philip Yancey. And Yancey credits Dr. Paul Brown, not only helping him to see pain in a positive life, but also healing him from a negative experience of church that damaged him in his early years. He opened my world and opened my faith, said Yancey. Dr. Brand spoke about this continu continuing stigma of leprosy that many, many of these sufferers still experience, despite the advancements in treatment and understanding the disease. He said there's still a lot of misunderstanding and fear, despite the fact that 95% of the people have built-in immunity to leprosy, if you didn't know that. He stated a lot of people think it's something from the past, that we're 200,000 new cases each year, by the way, and last year proves it isn't. Until recently, it's believed that leprosy was a highly contagious disease and it rotted the flesh. But in pioneering work, Dr. Brand realized that the disease was not rotting the flesh at all, but rather it was the flesh being damaged due to lack of pain receptors. You see, sufferers had no pain sense in it since that. Excuse me, no pain sensation 
to alert them to the harm and, and the damage they were doing to themselves and they don't even know they're doing it. Like stepping on a nail and you don't even stepped on it. So what happens, your foot starts to hurt and you don't even know it. And eventually the, the infection starts and then next thing you know, your foot is in real trouble. Yancey said that Dr. Brand once told him, I thank God for pain. If I could give one thing to my patients, I would give them pain. You, you know, you got to realize that there are opportunities right now with folks to love and care for them. No matter what's going on in their lives, with leprosy, maybe with AIDS, with cancer, and yes, with COVID-19. Luke, by the way, recorded an encounter that Jesus had with a man who had a very advanced case of leprosy. And like the scene in Outbreak, it was a beautiful display of compassion, especially for someone who's such in need of hope and healing. And the fact that Jesus was even in the vicinity of this man and his testimony is a is one of great compassion. Lepers always lived on the outskirts of town and in just terrible destitute areas, kind of like where Father Damien was uh, was with those lepers on that little tiny sliver of an island near Maui. And they would be self-quarantining. The general population would avoid outcasts of society at all costs and for good reason. In those days, leprosy was essentially a death sentence, both physically and of course emotionally. So Jesus didn't just bump into the man by accident in his travels. He often made a point of going through dangerous areas, areas that he was hated, by the way, due to the color of his skin, and areas where people were really infectious, areas where people just don't go. And with people you just don't get caught up with and not ever be seen with. Jesus would intentionally put himself with, in contact with the unkempt, the homeless, the thieves, the most hated, and the most unacceptable characters and in this case, the most unclean characters and people of society. So in this account, we have a desperate man who looks into the eyes of Jesus. He saw something he surely didn't even ever expect to see in another human for many, many years. Instead of the usual revulsion, what did he see? He saw sympathy. Instead of fear, what did he see? He saw love. Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched the man and said, I am willing, be healed. And instantly the leper was healed. That's verse 12 and 13. Imagine the joy that this man must have felt. Feeling the healing touch of another person. Five months now we have been experiencing self-isolation. We've been distancing each other from each other. And some of us have experienced mild isolation anxiety. Some have experienced, by the way, severe depression. And by the way, this man would have been secluded for many, many years and probably even forgotten by his own family and friends. He wanted to join society. He wanted to share meals with friends and family. He wanted to have a normal life. Are we willing to follow this kind of example? This kind of compassion that Jesus himself set for us. There are many individuals in the world right now who are disfigured, who are wounded and scarred, both physically and spiritually. Are you ready to open up to those people who are crying out for help? Do we intentionally go out of our way to seek the people who are in need? Do we even see beyond the fact that they might be unclean or they might be beyond hope? Jesus did it, and it was a life-changing experience. In many cases, Christians tend to avoid even non-Christians and those who have fallen far away from God. And at times, we treat them like lepers. If we want to show the true love of Christ to others, we must reach out and touch the unclean. Because of, our, of his great compassion, Jesus repeatedly offered kindness and help the people in situations that most would just avoid. As many of us begin to return to social interaction in one form or another, it's a good time to evaluate how God would like us to show his love in this hurting world. Who in your life needs to be touched? Can you see the increasing interactions and be more mindful and find meaning in, in an eternal perspective that there might be something more there. Jesus modeled this for his disciples and his followers of Jesus today. You should do the same. Do not forget the love and do not forget to care about people. Do not forget to touch people. Ensure you're doing it with the love of God. We are on the clock for this is our generation. Even in the midst of this pandemic, it's time to bring about change. And how? By loving and caring about one another. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week on Tuesday. Bye-bye.